Like I said before, there are yellow perch in here as well. But they tend to be, you know, more rare to see, at least in these shallow areas. I'm sure if I went out to uh, deeper spots, there might be some perch. I'm only in about five and a half feet of water, which typically I search for seven or eight feet. And I, I thought I was, I thought I was close to seven feet, but I uh, remembered on this low rants, I had it set up for the water line being, I think that's my bell. Well, that was exciting. That's my first uh, fish on one of the set lines with minnows. So far, I've got five fish on spoons, not tipped with anything. And that last fish that I caught on a spoon I should show is a little flyer here that I have. Might be a Northlands flyer. Not 100%, but <clears throat> anyway, the uh, the jigging seems to be the trick today. It's not unusual. I find early season, at least in this spot, the chain pickerel seem to go for movement rather than live bait. And then as the season progresses, it still only gets maybe 50-50 of uh, live bait and, and jigging. So it's really well worth your time. There's a lot of people that come out to this spot. All they do is they set up lines and they sit in a chair and wait. I find that a little boring. So I always find it's nice to jig and uh, yeah, well, proof right here that uh, it's it's panning out today. Hopefully we can get into a few more. I find later in the season the spoon sort of attracts them, brings them in, and then they go for the minnow. Uh, but early season, that that uh, minnow there, he's telling me whether there's a fish around and I can jig for him. So it works out well uh, with the sonar unit as well. I can see them when they get close to the hole and get close to my spoon. But with the minnow a little bit further away. I can uh, I can usually tell if there's a fish in the area, so I can switch things up with my jigging or get more aggressive with my jigging. So it works out well. Looks like we have a fish on. Looks like we have a fish on. Yeah, seriously, seriously. Let's see what we got. Pickerel. Nice pickerel. Maybe 15 inches or so. Maybe 14. Let's see if we can get them back home. There we go. And we'll just finish out the day fishing from the shack today, I guess. Maybe stay out another half hour or so. Oh, 
here again. Holy jeez. Nick, are you on speaker? Um, I got you on speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're making a video? Yeah, I'm making a video right now, so boys and girls, I just caught another pickerel, and I've got uh, the Canadian Fisher on speakerphone here. He called me just as I was catching this pickerel. So uh, let's see, let's see how big he is. Oh, it's my biggest of the day. He's 21, 21 inches long. Yeah, do you ever eat them? Uh, I do from time to time. Uh, are they good? Yeah, they're good eating. They're they're pretty yeah. they're pretty bony and um, yeah. so it's hard to get a lot of meat off them because you you have, they have some Y bones in them. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, do do uh, what depth of water are you in? Right now, I'm in five and a half feet of water. I'm not. I'm very. I'm very shallow. I'm testing out new uh -oh. new sonar equipment, yeah. and, and I I thought I was deeper, but it, there was a setting that I missed. I thought it was in oh, wow. six and a half, but I usually um, in this spot I usually go between six and eight feet of water. Um, but, yeah. And I'm really shallow today, but this is my eighth fish, so yeah. I'm, I'm still doing quite well. And, and what do you prefer, deep water or uh, shallow? In the winter, well, you know, yeah. pickerel are normally in the shallows anyway. Yeah. Um, but in the winter, definitely the shallow is the place to, to be for these yeah. fish. Yeah. What are you using for bait? Um, well, I, I do have some live minnows. I'm just going to show this pickerel to the camera that I just... I just got the hook out, so and I'm gonna release them here. Whoa, whoa! There he goes. There. I uh, I do have some live minnows set up, but I've I've only caught two of my eight pickerel today on the minnows, yeah. and I did lose a minnow on one of them, which means that a, a pickerel did hit that one. So if that would have been my ninth. So three out of the the nine hits kind of thing, and then the others have been all on just spoons with nothing yeah. on it. But this last one, and I'm going to show the camera, is a spoon tipped with a minnow that I he had he had gotten hit by. I caught a fish on him. It was the first pickerel I caught uh, on a minnow, and the minnow he he ate him up pretty good, so he was dead. He but he was still on the hook, so I took them off and cut them up for bait. So I've just got a spoon tipped with a piece of black nose dace minnow. Yeah, uh, do you need a license for there or no? You know, in tidal water you don't need a license, so that's the beauty of it. Oh, nice. So it's a nice. bit of a drive, but you don't have to uh, pay for a license. You only need a, no. a, a license for inland waters. Yeah, do you use uh, jigs or no? Um, I will use jigs sometimes. If I use a jig, I usually tip it with a minnow instead of a soft yeah. instead of a soft plastic. Otherwise, I stick with mostly spoons. It's going to pack up because it's yeah. daylight's kind of leaving. I I had three set lines. Yeah. And I have one rod. Nice. Do you, do you have uh, line tip? What? Flaggy things, so when you get a bite, the flag goes up. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? All right, I'm showing the camera another pickerel. I still have the Canadian Fisher online or yeah. on my phone here on speakerphone, and holy smokes! So uh, this is a smaller one. He is about 17, 17 and a half inches. Still a decent fish, and I will unhook this guy. I'm going to unhook this guy and release him. So the sun is sort of setting right now. It's around... what time is it now? 4.30, 4.25. 4.30, 4.25. And all of a sudden 
pickerel are finding me. So there's a nice, nice little one. I'm gonna let him go. Is the water cold? The water is cold, but it still cleans, <laughs> still cleans off the slime from the pickerel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's getting pretty dark now. You can see in the video it's pretty grainy. So uh, probably gonna pack up soon. I haven't caught any more fish since that last one. And uh, I think it was, you know, I was on the phone with that last fish with the Canadian Fisher. So I thought I would say, if you haven't uh, checked out his YouTube channel yet, check him out, the Canadian Fisher. Uh, go and check out his site. He's got some great fishing videos. Subscribe to him as well. And uh, I hope you'll subscribe subscribe to my channel as well. And uh, like the video, share the video if you liked it. And uh, put on notifications, you'll get some notifications of the next one. I might show a few little clips here of me uh, packing up, as long as it's not too dark out and the camera picks it up. But uh, other than that, like I said, uh, I will. I am planning a trip to Saskatchewan soon. And uh, I hope to make some videos of that, so stay tuned for that. But before then, only a few days from now, I'm going out fishing with a, a bunch of friends. And I might be going fishing with the Canadian Fisher as well. So stay tuned for those episodes. Hopefully I'll have some videos out to you. Uh, I'm hoping to get them out on more of a regular basis than I have been. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I had a great day out here, and we'll see you next time. I guess I'm just gonna head back to the truck and start the drive home. So here we go. It's not much of a hike. It's probably only, oh, I don't know, half a kilometer, 400 meters, something like that. So it's not too bad. And, uh, Hall's pretty good. It's a really wide sled, this Nanook clam. Two person flip up. Really like it. Anyway, we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye for now.